Welcome back. In this video, we're going to be configuring Cisco Firepower to send data to Splunk utilizing the new Cisco eStreamer Encore app. Um, there were some older Cisco uh, eStreamer apps that were a little bit on the more difficult side to configure. Uh, you had to install some Perl scripts and do some other stuff to make it work. It's a little bit messy. I actually have a blog post on my blog ab about how to do that. Um, the new app makes it a lot more simple. Uh, so a lot more simpler. So we're going to go ahead and do this. Um, in this, you want to make sure you get the most recent updated app and install it. You can go ahead and download that from Splunk Base. And with that, let's go ahead and start our configuration. I'm going to go over to Firepower and actually create the client. Uh, this is done under System, in Integration, and eStreamer. And I'm just going to name this Splunk. So I, when I see the client in, in Firepower, I know exactly what it is. And you give it a password that, that you'll need to use for this uh, certificate. So I click save and I'll download this guy. So it's downloaded. And you want to make sure that you configure which events you want to send over. I'm just going to send everything massively. So click save. All right. So you'll want to move that certificate uh, that you just downloaded over to Splunk. So there's a specific folder that you would send it to. Um, wherever you've installed Splunk into, you go to etc. apps, TAE streamer, bin, Encore. And you'll want to move that file over there. And um, let me just go ahead and delete these because these are all leftovers from me testing this out. <laughs> And you, once that's over there, you'll rename it to client. No matter, no matter what, it has to be client.pkcs12. So with that, let's go ahead and go back to Splunk. And we're going to want to configure a couple things to get this app working. So to start out, let's go to settings, data inputs, files and directory, files and directories. Um, you'll see here that there's a pre-built uh, added uh, directory for etc. apps, TA, eStreamer, data. Click enable to enable that. Then we'll go back to data inputs and we'll want to go to our scripts. There are three scripts installed, clean, start, and status for uh, TA, eStreamer. You want to enable all of those. Next, we'll want to go ahead. We'll want to go back to our app configuration and so thing here, and we'll look for Cisco eStreamer Encore app. There it should be a. Let me scroll in so it's a little bit easier to see. There will be a setup that you can click on. So click on that, and you you'll want to go ahead and click enable. Uh, only click that if eStreamer is running over on the fi Firepower first. Then, and you have the certificate installed. Put in your Firepower or your FMC IP address. That, that password that we gave, uh, gave on the other side. And the data sent over packets, connections, metadata, it, all depends on how much data you want to send to, uh, to Splunk. It could, if you have a really busy environment, it can fill up those logs pretty quickly. I'm going to send everything because it's a very small environment. Um, it all depends on what what, what is uh, your company's policy. So I'll go ahead and click Save. And that should enable it. So let's go over to the app for Cisco eStreamer. Take a look what's going on. Oh, it's still disabled. Give it a second and it should start up. Sometimes it takes a couple seconds to kind of get there. It's also possible I entered the wrong password when I was entering that, that in. So let's go back here really quickly and double check. Just in case. Okay, let's go back to the eStreamer app. Okay, now it's running and more logs are coming through as you can see here. So that's pr pretty awesome. Um, 
If you have the old uh, Cisco add-on for Cisco Fi uh, Splunk add-on for Cisco Firesight, I don't think I have that installed on here, but I'll just double check. There's a data source you might need to change, but I don't think I have it installed. No, I don't. Besides this, um, I just wanted to point out a couple other things. There's other apps available in dashboards. For example, there's the Cisco Firepower Defense FTD dashboard that's available. Um, that is a little bit different. Uh, you would need to add a couple different things. Uh, so in this case, you need to download the Cisco Firepower Threat Defense source type. Um, that's a source type for uh, syslogs coming in from either FD FDMs or uh, Firepower Device Manager um, Firepower devices or the FMC. Those would be able to send uh, connection events via syslog the eStreamer, which we already installed, and the Splunk add-on for Cisco ASA. Uh, I'm not going to be configuring this here, um, but I just wanted to kind of show you what that would look like. There's also um, another cool, the Cisco Firepower app for Splunk. That's, uh, you know, same kind of dashboards. Are very, they're, I think, personally, they're a lot prettier. Uh, in this case, you can see there's not really much in terms of security threats, but let's say, let's look at connection, uh, Context Explorer. You'll get to see kind of some of those, those, uh, those connection events and other things that were uh, that are showing up, and as you can see, since we only enabled this a few minutes ago, there's only a little bit of traffic going through. You can do searches and stuff just based off of stuff that's been coming from uh, from the app, but um, or from the eStreamer, but there's not really much there right now. But this gives you a kind of an idea of what's uh, you know what some of the possibilities and some of the nice little dashboards you can use. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and end this video. Uh, thank you so much for watching and. I will move on to the next one.